Hi, and thanks for choosing Planet Rentals for your next outdoor adventure. Uh, first off, we're going to go over some general trailer information that is pertinent to all of our different camping trailers, and then we'll go specifically over the camping trailer that you have reserved. First of all, when you come for your reservation, make sure you plan enough time to get paperwork filled out and the trailer hooked up. Uh, when appointments are rushed, we always find that then, you know, some information is skipped over or, you know, we're not as thorough as we'd like to be. So make sure you plan plenty of time for your pickup appointment. Secondly, make sure that you have your driver's license and the insurance card for the vehicle that will be towing our trailer available and ready for us. We'll need copies of those along with the contract that you sign. Now it's important that you know what type of site you're going to with the trailer. Uh, many sites have water, power, and sewer hookups, and many sites have none of that at all. And how the trailer works and operates is quite dependent on that, and so you'll want to know those differences before you head out there. And then I wanted to go over some general driving tips for you. When you're towing a trailer, it's always very important to drive at a very slow and safe speed. Um, you know, it's just not worth pushing. You know, plan some extra time in your trip so that you have plenty of time to get where you're going. It's easier on our trailer and easier on your tow vehicle if you just take it easy. Secondly, because you'll be a longer rig, you need to make sure that you're careful when you're cornering. You need to take corners a little bit wider and you know plan for that sort of thing it's always smart to know exactly where you're going have you know good directions or have driven there before because it's hard to make evasive maneuvers or u-turns and that sort of thing when you have a trailer in tow and then whenever you're backing up the trailer make sure that you have someone there helping you back up uh, to help you make sure you don't of course run into any obstacles and that sort of thing and then uh, when you're setting up the trailer, you want to make sure that you're being careful of anything that's overhead on the trailer or around the sides of it. Many of our trailers have slide outs or pop downs and that sort of thing that extend from the side of the trailer. So before you get it all set up, you want to make sure there's plenty of clearance all around the trailer. And then also we want you to really treat our trailers well. We have what we feel the best trailers and the best pricing out there of any RV dealer. And a big part of that is because we really feel like we have the best renters. So we do put some responsibility on you to make sure you take care of our units. Uh, you know, we suggest taking your shoes off when you go inside the trailer. That really just helps with cleanup. It helps maintain the floor and the, you know, the furniture, all that sort of thing. We suggest that you try not to take the trailer off-road. We suggest that you keep it nice and swept and clean. And then, you know, help with eliminating horseplay and other rough activities that may happen in or outside the trailer just to help you know keep it nicer and cleaner for those that come after you and then also wanted to note that all of our trailers have a spare tire on them of course but that spare tire is not intended for long distance driving that spare tire is intended to get you somewhere to get a tire repaired and replaced so that um, you know you can continue on with your trip so please don't plan on using the spare tire to drive any extended distance if something were to happen to one of the original tires on the trailer. We of course keep all those tires in great working condition for you. Now we'll go over the general hookup of the trailer to the tow vehicle here. So the first thing we're going to do is lower the trailer down onto the ball of the vehicle. And then every trailer comes with a safety pin. This is what's going to ensure that the trailer is locked on to the truck securely. If the pin goes through, you know you've got it set up correctly and it can't come undone from the ball of the vehicle. Next we have the safety chains and they um, have hooks that clip onto the, the security hole on the vehicle. I like to cross the chains once or twice with one going this way and the other one going this direction. Next is the hookup for the lights on the trailer. All of our trailers have this seven pin RV connection um, and so you need to make sure your vehicle can accommodate that type of plug. And then lastly is the breakaway cable for the trailer. What this does is if the trailer were to come unhooked from the vehicle somehow, this cable will pull and activate the brakes on the trailer so that it doesn't keep rolling away. All right, and then if you're using one of our equalizer hitches, you'll want to lower the trailer down onto the ball of the tow vehicle, just enough to get that pin locked in, and then you want to swing the arms up onto the side of the trailer and lock those in. Then lower the rest of the trailer weight down onto the tow vehicle. What that does is help transfer some of the weight of the trailer up to the front tires of the tow vehicle for cornering and braking, 
and it also helps with sway control as you're driving down the road. Now be mindful of the things that you put inside the trailer. If you're using one of our equalizer hitches, make sure that does not go inside the trailer on the linoleum. We've had quite a few trailers damaged that way as well as you know generators and other rough equipment like bikes and things like that. Please be careful with the flooring of our trailers. All right, once you arrive at your campsite, the first thing you're gonna need to do is level the trailer. So with the level that's provided with the trailer, you'll wanna check for side to side levelness using the back bumper of the trailer. So you just put that on there. And then uh, depending on which side is high or low, you'll raise that side up using the tires of the trailer and the blocks that we provide. With these blocks, you'll tuck them up underneath the trailer tire and back up onto them. If you needed to go even higher, you can build a little ramp using these blocks to go even too high here. Once you back up onto the blocks, then you check your levelness again and make sure you're nice and level. And then once your vehicle's level side to side, you want to chalk the tires using the included chalks. Just one on each side of the tire, tuck them in nice and firm, and then the same on the other side of the trailer on one of the tires. Okay, now that you're level side to side and the tires are chalked on the trailer really well, it's now time to unhook it from your tow vehicle and check levelness front to back. To check that levelness, you can just place the level here on the front A-frame of the trailer. And then you're going to use the tongue jack, raised or lowered, in order to level the trailer front to back. Now you can drop the stabilizers that are on the trailer. Uh, there's a provided crank that you connect here. You just attach it to the end. And just crank those stabilizers down until they're on the ground. Uh, once they touch the ground, I usually do another two cranks to support a little bit of the weight of the trailer. Uh, but you don't support much of the weight. In fact, these stabilizers are not used to level the trailer whatsoever. They're just used to help eliminate some of the rocking motion of the trailer when you're walking around inside. Now when your trip's over and it's time to hook up and leave, you're going to do all of those steps we went over just in reverse. So first you're going to raise those stabilizer jacks that we lowered. Then you're going to hook up to the vehicle and of course raise the tongue jack all the way. Then remove the chocks that are on the tires on both sides of the trailer then pull the trailer off of any leveling block side to side and you're good to go. All right, here's our Coleman hybrid trailer. Now this trailer has two propane tanks on the front and by convention we always use the passenger side tank first and then roll over to the driver's side tank if needed. You can access those tanks through this top little compartment here to turn them on and off and to roll between the tanks. I'll pull this cover off and show you where that lever is to switch between the tanks. You'll also need to pull off the cover in order to refill the tank as well. Now to open up the propane tanks, you just turn the valve all the way open. And then here is the switch that will switch between both tanks. So when the lever's pointed towards this tank, the trailer's running off this tank. And then you would switch it the other way for it to run off the other tank. Located behind the propane and also on the front of the trailer are the two batteries that run the trailer. Now these batteries charge when the trailer is plugged into a generator or to full time power, but there's nothing that you really need to do to them up here on front. Now here on the driver's side of the trailer are two service access panels. This one's for the fridge and this one's for the hot water heater. But those, both of those appliances turn on from inside of the trailer, so there should be no reason to access both either of those. Here also on this side of the trailer is your water hookup. Now this would be if you're at a site with full hookups and have the ability to connect a hose between the water spigot and the trailer. Now this end of the hose will just screw right onto the trailer. And then the other end of the hose will have a pressure regulator on it that we provide. This pressure regulator will um, limit the amount of water pressure that will get into your hose and into the lines inside the trailer. That ensures that they don't exceed their capacity and burst. So you will actually screw this PSI regulator right onto the spigot at your site. Underneath the trailer on the driver's side back corner is your sewer outlet. Now if you had um, full hookups where you could empty your sewer and water at your site, you can just connect the hose once you get to your site. And that hose connects by just going over the little notches with the twist and then running the sewer hose into the ground. If you don't have full sewer hookups at your site, 
then you'll only use this to empty your tanks at the end of your trip. Now there's two valves here. One is your black water valve and the other is your gray water valve. Gray water is your sinks and your shower. Black water is your sewer. Now on this particular trailer, you can't empty your gray water without also emptying your black water. So when you go to empty your tanks, you always do the black water first. You would pull that valve all the way out towards you. Once that's finished emptying, then you would pull the gray water out towards you until that finishes emptying. Then you can run lots of fresh water down the toilet and sinks and shower to clean everything out. Now the sewer hose stores in the back bumper of the trailer. Pull out the bolt here, remove the cap, and then tuck the sewer hose right inside. And lastly here on the back corner of the driver's side is where you'll connect your power cord. So this end plugs into the trailer and screws on tight. And then the other end will plug into the power pole at your side if you have full time hookups. And we include an adapter that will adapt down the 30 amp to just a regular outlet. That adapter can be removed to plug into the power pole that most campsites generally have. Here on the back of the trailer is the back queen bed that pops out from the trailer. Uh, there's an identical one on the front, but we'll show you here how to pop this one out. So just open up the latch on both sides, and then pull it on down. Then you'll take the fabric and make sure it's pulled out along the outer edge of the trailer, and it can also Velcro here along the sides. And the rest of the setup is on the inside of the trailer. Here on the passenger side of the trailer is the water inlet for the water tank. This is what you would use if you don't have water hookups at your site. You would just remove the cap and fill this with a hose um, until it starts to bubble back at you, at which point you know it's full. Now, this water goes into a tank that's underneath the trailer. So in order to pump that water up to the faucets and the toilet, you would run the water pump, which we'll show you on the inside of the trailer. Then right next to it here is the hot air vent for the hot water heater. Now, I'd just like to point that out because you want to be careful of what you put around that vent and make sure that no one gets burned. All right, on the passenger side of the trailer is the awning. To work the awning, you're first going to loosen this dial down here, just a couple of turns. Then there's a black bracket up here that you're going to loosen. You just kind of pinch it together until it comes free from the outer shrouding. Now you're going to grab your awning bar and Flip the ratchet here at the top of the awning. Now before you pull the awning down, make sure you've uh, also done the knobs and the bracket on the opposite side of the awning. Then grab your other end of the awning bar, grab the black loop and pull out. Until the awning stops. Now unclip the support bar from the bottom of the awning and clip it to the top. And then repeat on the opposite side. Once both support bars are in place, then you grab the handle down here at the bottom, pull it outwards and raise the awning to the desired height. And repeat on the other side. Once your awning's out, it's a great amenity to have, but awnings are notorious for getting damaged. If there's any wind at all, you need to make sure you put that awning away and if it's raining at all, it collects water very quickly and it cannot support the weight and it can damage the awning. And if you leave the trailer, even just for a couple minutes and the weather looks perfect, you still need to put up the awning because you just never know what might happen. Now to take the awning down, just repeat those steps in reverse order. First pull out the handle and lower the awning back down to its bottom position. Repeat on the other side. Remove the bracket from the top and move the support arm to the bottom bracket. And repeat on the other side. Now flip the ratchet to roll it back up while you're holding on to the black strap. Then clip in the brace 
and tighten down the dial. To unfold the steps, just pull the steps towards you and then unfold the bottom step. Located right inside the door of the trailer is the thermostat for the heater. To activate that, you will just pull the lever over to the desired heat level and the heater will kick on and off to maintain that temperature. To turn the heater off, it's all the way to the left and a click and the heater will take a few minutes to cool down and turn off. Now it's important that whenever you're out of the trailer or not needing the heater that you turn it all the way to the left to turn it off. Alright, to turn on the stove, the stove works off of propane, so you're just going to turn a knob here to light and then with the lighter light the corresponding burner. And the same will go for the oven. Turn the knob to pilot, open up the oven and use a lighter to spark it on. Located on the fridge are the controls to turn it on using electricity or propane. To the left an auto is for electricity and that's if you have full time power at your site. And to the right is to run the fridge off of propane or gas and that's if you don't have full time power at your site. Now when you move it to gas you'll see that there's this orange gas light. If that's solid everything is good to go. If that starts flashing, however, that means that you've either run out of propane or perhaps there's an air bubble or a hiccup in the gas line. If you ever see that light flashing, turn the fridge to off, wait 10 or 15 seconds, and then turn it back on. Now also here to the right is a temperature setting, and we usually say that 3 or 4 is sufficient. This trailer also features a CD, DVD player, AM, FM radio, and the TV of course to play the DVDs. Now the TV we do have secured with some bungee cords uh, for why the uh, trailer is in travel. Uh, so make sure that those are in place before the trailer moves. Now the TV is only going to work if you're running off of a generator or you have full time power hookups at your site. Alright, the dinette here can be folded down into a bed like it is now. Or um, to put it as a dinette, just scoot these seat back cushions back. And then set up the table. The table just has legs here that fold down and lock into place. And then the table can be positioned like so. Now the couch also folds flat into a bed. Just lift up the bottom and let it rest down flat. Alright, now I've already folded down uh, the bed on the front of the trailer. So you just unbungee the, the mattress here. And then inside each mattress should be a shepherd's crook looking pole. Now take your shepherd's crook bar that has a U-shaped bracket on one end and connect it to the bar that's resting on the bed platform. Then raise and push that bar towards the outer edge of the trailer. Then connect it into the bracket at the roof. Now you can lay out your mattress and your bed's ready to go. Located directly under the kitchen sink are some of the controls and meters. So you have meters for your battery, your fresh water, your gray water, and your black water located there, as well as the switch to activate the water pump. Now the water pump's only going to be used if you're using the tank water that you filled on the passenger side of the trailer. That pump will pressurize the lines and flip on and off as needed to keep those lines pressurized so you have water at your faucet and your toilet. But whenever you're not using the water, we ask that you turn the pump off. Now you can also activate your hot water heater using this switch, which will heat the hot water off of gas. Or this switch, which will heat the hot water using electricity. Now you'd only want to use the electricity switch if you have hookups and full-time power at your site. Alright, inside the bathroom, to flush the toilet, you'll just step on the lever on the front. And if you want to flush with some water, then you would want to turn on the water pump unless you have full-time water hookups. That pump will then pump some water into the toilet bowl as well. Now we provide the RV safe toilet paper for you to use during the duration of your trip. We don't want you using any other type of toilet paper and you especially need to make sure that no other towels, rags, or cleaning supplies are flushed down the toilet. That's very important and crucial. We also provide the RV safe chemical that helps break down the waste and helps with odor control. These come in just individual packets that you'll just throw into the toilet bowl and flush down. We usually say one every other day. Now we'll include a user manual with the trailer 
along with a cleaning checklist. But again, we ask that you help us take care of the trailer. We suggest kicking off your shoes when you come in the trailer. We provide a broom for you to keep it broom swept. Um, all that just helps with your cleanup at the end and helps us keep our trailer nice and clean. Now to fold up the beds, the most important thing is just to make sure you don't get any fabric caught up in the seal of the bed. Thanks again for choosing Planet Rentals for your next camping trip. We hope you really enjoy our trailers and that you have a great time.